sometimes you've got a database that is pre-existing and you need to make changes to it, but you want to do it in a way that's going to be supported in a sustainable and DevOps friendly way. Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP Net Monsters. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at an existing database that has already been built, and now we want to start making changes to it, but we want to do it in a proper way. Uh, so we're going to use a tool called dbup for this. There's like an infinite number of ways of doing this. Um, you can do migrations, edge framework migrations, fluid migrations. You can use something like Roundhouse or dbup. Um, for our case, we have an existing database, so we're going to use DB up for it. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I reached out to uh, Simon here because I, while I've done a number of migrations and I've definitely worked on projects where the migration engine's already been set up and obviously you're just writing SQL or whatever, this is actually, like, believe it or not, the first time where I've run into a situation where, um, A, I didn't have the ability to recreate the database. So I'm starting with a static thing that the DevOps on this project is still fairly early. And so we're not recreating databases when we go out to environments um, uh, quite yet and so I have um, a copy of the database that I, I need to maintain and now I need to start applying some migrations to it uh, but uh, yeah I can't actually um, recreate the database and of course when we go out further into environments um, staging and eventually production we're not going to be over create deleting the database and starting over again every time so I reached out to Simon and said hey what's your tool of choice he said DB up and we started talking about some other things um, uh, Simon to preserve what's already there and to make sure uh, we're we're doing something you said you had a strategy for baselining yeah so what I do is I start by just going into SQL server management studio whatever it's called and just like export the entire database okay. script. So if you go in and then you just sure. like find your database and right click on it and go tasks and oh, no one which one it is. Generate scripts. Is Generate scripts. Okay. Uh, and then next and I'll analyze it and then you can do the entire database. Yeah, which we need to do because this one actually has uh, tables, views, stored procedures, user-defined functions. So we actually need to do all of the things pretty yeah, much. So that's fine. Uh, and then you can either save it to a file and put it in your directory, or just put it on your clipboard. Either way, it yeah. doesn't really matter. Okay, we'll just throw that under the clipboard because we're just going to bring it into the project anyways, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So now in my project, um, I'm assuming I'm going to do something. I'm going to add a folder. Yeah. So I have a folder called baseline in the way that I do this. Okay. Uh, and then in there, I just have like uh, some item here, and I just called it like it's just a, a SQL file, and I called it something like uh, baseline.sql. Okay, pretty it's straightforward. Like creative like that. And then whenever so, that great. script is done, looks like it's done, and you can just okay. hit Control V in here. And so it's a 20,000 line long file. We'll just Wah! save it. Okay, we're going to save it. Yeah, don't ever think about it again. Uh, actually, go up to the top of the file real quick. Oh, sure. Um, we probably need to take out use master, and that can probably go. And then optionally, we could get rid of that create database. I think we assume that there's going to be a database already existing. Okay. So we can probably get rid of that create database statement too. Sure. And now um, this has a database name in it, but um, this is like a hard-coded name. Right. How do I, so what do I want so to I, get away I from? I think we're probably just going to delete this stuff too, because right now this is setting up properties of the new to create database. We're going to assume we already have a database set up. Okay. Uh, and in fact, I can see things like it's setting the compatibility level, so we don't want to do that. We want to just... Right. Okay. It's all, all of the, again, the things that we're going to just assume are there. Okay. So... Scope. And then probably all the way down to line 17 as well. Uh, yeah. And then we probably want to get rid of the users in here too. Okay. So, um, and the roles and... Yeah, because we'll, we we'll assume that's created externally. Okay, but from here on, I think we're good. We've created a couple of schemas. You can probably drop those two NT authority schemas, and we'll just have the one EDMS schema. Sure. This is okay. So now we have this big table, this big script here, say less than 20,000 lines. And that yeah. is 
the first step. So the next thing I would do is create a migrations folder. So the same level as the database. And this is going to contain all of our scripts that we run after this. Um, so add a new item in here. And there's kind of like two naming strategies you can use here. Uh, yeah, so James is following the, the numerical naming strategy. So this is just like every script you add, you increment the number. Uh, and that's great for teams of like one person. As soon as you start <laughs> getting more than one person, then you end up in this situation where you're like, oh, what's the latest number? I got to go find it. And somebody else has got a branch where they've already used that number and so forth. So Yeah, we uh, actually I, work uh, on a project where we run into that quite often. So it has the yeah. same number. We have a couple of files that have the same number on them. But. Yeah, so I just use a date sometimes on it. Okay, sure. And so what's the ordering for execution then that it's, um, well, uh, I guess so if you're using the date, then it, it will Yeah, so it'll own. run it alphabetically, but if you do like 2020, 20, oh, four, oh, four, oh, one, and then like, uh, it's 824 where I am, 924 where you are. So you just do like 924, right. there, we go. there we go. And okay, then, easy. and then some sort of a name for what it is that you're doing. Right, so the first one is, is I'm actually uh, removing hard-coded um, uh, table names, or uh, environment names, yeah. which is why I, it's the catalyst for all these changes. So .sql, so there's, I, I'm going to have this file that eventually I will run. So now right. I've got my migration in place, but the first thing I'm going to need to do if this is going to actually migrate some databases, I'm going to need to install the dbup package, right? Right, so there's actually okay. two packages that we're going to install here. So the first one is uh, dbup. Package DB up, okay. And is uh -huh. it is there a, just that's the name of the package, right? Like that? Yeah, just like that. So you can do that one. And then awesome. the second one is a little bit longer, unfortunately. No worries. So it is a system dot command line. So you're gonna pick it up for me. So I don't think it's gonna command be command line. Okay. Yeah. Dot. And this is weird. Dragon fruit. D R A G O N F R U I T. Okay. So we actually recorded an episode on doing command line parsing with this tool, I don't know, a couple of months ago. Um, and then this one, it's probably still an alpha, so you might have to add a, a flag to get it to pick that up. Pre release. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this, this does our command line parsing, and it's really cool and all of that stuff. Um, but if you're interested in that, we'll, we'll link the episode. Uh, okay. So now we've got that in place. Uh, we can go and take a look at our program. CS, perfect. Uh, so I am gonna. What's what's the best way? Do you want me to just send you the the scripts that I have for, for doing this, or do you want us to to type it all out? Um, it's, it's about fifty lines. So okay, no. Do you, if you want to just send it to me, so we'll just pause the video here, and then we'll. Um... Uh, we'll come back when we got the scripts over in place. Well, we'll just we'll just pretend that we are magically typing very quickly here. Yeah, exactly. I'm about to go like right now. I'll go right now. So, um, perfect. I, I typed really fast. Thank you. Oh, for, it was uh, it was amazing. I couldn't yeah. believe how fast you Wait, typed. I, I do have to show you something. Have you guys ever have you ever seen this? Um, what is it like? Hacker typer. Hacker typer, I think it's what it's called. So you go, you go here, and if uh, you have friends that are coming, this is actually the Linux kernel, I think. So you just, you just mash on your keys. Oh my gosh, you're such a fast typer! It's unbelievable. And uh, it makes everybody uh, just really gaze nice. in wonder and awe as you type out the kernel <laughs> for Linux. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let, let's walk through this file here, and I'll, yeah. I'll explain what we've got here. So you notice first off that the main method has weird arguments to it now. Sure. Um, so that is actually what Dragonfruit provides us here. Um, so I have in the project that I stole this from um, some sample data. So you could probably take that sample data flag out of there unless you're going to have a, a set of sample data that you load in for doing testing. Okay. So the sample data oh, you have right there. So you've just, you're just taking that in. Okay. I see what you've got going on there. Okay. So sample data. Um, and then there's going to be some kind of flag or something that you use in here, right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm actually not seeing it. Sample so oh, right there. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I can just replace this with, and this is a method that you have here. So we have no sample data. So I'm just going to remove that. And 
do, 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 and then return, and I'm taking that guy out. And I'm taking that guy out. Okay. That should be most of the things. Right. So I have an additional function in here too that you might not need, which is where I'm passing the database name in. So there were some cases in the scripts that I had that I needed to know the name of the database that we were applying this to. Okay. Um, and so I was doing some variable substitution inside of the file. You might be able to take out lines 9 and 16. Okay, so 9 and 16. Yeah, and uh, I think right. that should be it for you. So what this is going to do now is it's going to pull um, the connection string from the uh, command line arguments. Uh, so if you were to run this with like dash dash connection string and then give it a connection string, it would override that connection string you have there. But that's the default. So this is going to work on my local machine. It's going to update the database that I'm targeting. And right. the upgrader is a variable of type. Um, oh, interesting. It's a dynamic. So there's some stuff going on here. Uh, so deploy changes to SQL database with scripts embedded in assembly. Ah, that's an important point. We'll have to come back to that. And then we're passing in a method basically to say whether or not it should be used. And then it's going to say if, it, if it's the database.baseline, then we say no. Uh, baseline. And so baseline is the false. So if either of these come back false, then we are going to skip it. We're going to say yes, basically, if these do not come back as false. OK. Um, now, I do have another question there. That this one's called database.baseline. So I should probably name that my baseline.sql. Um, so I think the way this works is the, the project name is database. So if you're calling this migrations, I think you'd have to change the word database set to migrations. Data migrations, okay. And then also put, put dot baseline in there as well. Dot baseline. baseline. Oh, so, I got so the way it right. works okay. is like when this gets embedded in the, the assembly, it's going to be called like the name of the project with dots in it. Um, so I th I think this will work because it's fine. It's basically going to ignore anything that start that is in that baseline directory. Sure. Because um, these things, the scripts are embedded in the assembly. So in fact, that's something we should do before we forget about it is we should go and right click on that baseline SQL and on the other one and just change them to uh, the top one, actually. Uh, it's the build action embedded resource rate. Yes. There we go. So one, okay. And then and the baseline. Yeah. Now, do I need to do that for the baseline if I don't intend to run it? Uh, well, if you don't ever intend to run it, no. But we've already got the script in place that allow yeah. you to run it. So the, gotcha. the idea behind this is that uh, when I'm doing my deployments, I can stand up a testing database using the baseline and then the migrations, and then that gives me some confidence that uh, I'm building up a proper environment. And in fact, in the stuff that I'm running, I build like a baseline and then I run migrations and then I put sample data in and I do all of that inside of Docker container. Uh, and then I can run my tests against that Docker container. And when it's done, I just toss the container. Perfect. Okay, so this is going to perform the upgrade with any scripts that it needs to. It's going to write something, I'm assuming, to the database as well? Uh, yeah, so the way that these tools work, so this one and the other one that's sort of a similar tool is one called Roundhouse. Um, the way that they work is they will create a migration table inside of your database, and that table just lists basically all the scripts that it has run historically. Uh, so the next time you come and run this, the first thing it does is it goes and takes a look at what's already in the database. And if it finds a list of scripts in there, it removes those from the list of scripts to run. Gotcha. OK, so in for all intents and purposes, I've got my baseline set up. We've got our filter on here to make sure that baseline is not run. Um, and I've got an empty migration here that's not going to do anything. Um, so I could actually run that, and it would work. Yeah, well, um, let's give it a try. Yeah, let's give it a try. So, And I'm expecting a table to be generated in the database then, correct? Yeah, so you should get some so, debugging output from this. If you just go to like, debug. And then like six up from where you are, a lot up from where you are. Oh, I suppose you could have just hit F5 as well. Oh, sure. Um, F5. Build errors. Uh, no. OK. So what do we have here? Um, Current SDK does not support 3.1. Oh. 
So, oh, was this? So was this a .NET? I had I made it as a .NET 3.1 package, but for whatever reason, my um, my it must not have. Uh, actually, I'm kind of confused as to what's going on. Um, and I'm That's... actually not seeing properties on my project. Okay, so. Target framework. target framework to oh you don't actually have .NET 3.1 installed. Okay, so, so that's a, a that's a separate problem, but um, that's fine. Uh, we will. Um, I I think this is the um, you know we'll maybe do a follow up uh, here when we look at a couple of other options that we've got for some sample data and maybe even put this inside of something that's got a Docker container or whatever. We can do that down the road. If you're interested in doing that and having a look at that, then um, yeah, by all means, just uh, put a comment in there and we'll walk through what that configuration looks like in, in further detail. And we'll watch the end of this thing actually running when um, developers you know install the proper target frameworks and things <laughs> like that. Um, okay, awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time here uh, this no morning. Problem. Thanks for working through this. And uh, as always, be sure to like, comment, share, leave messages down below, and uh, mash on that subscribe button. Tell your friends. I think you know there's a lot of kids out of school right now worldwide. They should just watch the monsters. Oh, I feel like those kids have enough problems already without having to watch us. <laughs> awesome. Okay, thanks very much, Simon. Thanks Thank for you. Thanks.